Boy Interrupted The Murder of Gannon Stork Extract read by the author Chapter 1 Monday Murder I was a naughty kid, Liam Hemsworth. Far above a row of almost new houses lining Mandan Drive in Colorado Springs, the silver prairie moon slips down through broken clouds and out of sight. The last dog finishes up barking. Hollering human voices agitate before settling down again. For some it's a relief that the next day is a school day. For others, like 11-year-old Gannon Stork, there's one last chance to play. One by one golden squares all along the drive go out. By midnight an icy gloom, black as pitch, settles over the button-down neighborhood. Various devices programmed to keep time quietly record Sunday, January 26th, becoming Monday the 27th. This midwinter Monday starts like every other day, in darkness. But then something stirs. Inside one house on Mandan Drive, a 36-year-old woman with raven black hair taps her index finger against the bright square of her iPhone. My son burned the carpet. How do I fix it? It's exactly nine and a half minutes after midnight. The illuminated iPhone is reduced to two tiny squares in Letitia Stork's black eyes. For a long time, Gannon's stepmother, who has some training as a teaching assistant, types in various search terms. 42 minutes past midnight and 50 seconds. Will humidifier help if exposed to smoke? 43 minutes past midnight and 20 seconds. Smoke effects. Will humidifier help? 43 minutes past midnight and 30 seconds. Smoke from fire. Will humidifier help? It's not clear whether Letitia has been sickened by the smoke or Gannon. Since Gannon had undisclosed health problems, it's possible smoke inhalation from burning the carpet the previous night, along with Letitia's emotional hysteria, aggravated his condition. Regardless of health issues, whatever went up in smoke inside the house aggravated some kill switch in Gannon's stepmother. Twelve minutes after the trifecta of smoke humidifier searches, Letitia's search takes on a different tone and intent. Letitia's index finger taps compulsively against the bright square of her iPhone. 55 minutes past midnight, 44 seconds. Colorado law for kids staying at home. 57 minutes past midnight, 20 seconds. School is out. Is it okay for my kid to stay home alone? 10125 Sun is sick but I have to go to work 10325 Sun sick can he stay home The quaint house with its American flag out front reeks of smoke and swelling disquiet Gannon is ill or upset and can't sleep Letitia is stuck babysitting her stepchild and evidently going to be stuck with him all night, and all through Monday as well. Where's Al? As usual, he That was Boy Interrupted, The Murder of Gannon Stark. So that is the end of the excerpt. Boy Interrupted, The Murder of Gannon Stark has just been published on Amazon. It's available exclusively on Amazon Kindle. It's my 98th book. Believe it or not, I've written almost 100 books in the space of about seven years. So 
if you're thinking lockdown is tough, well, writing that amount of books in seven years, that is like being locked down. That is literally, uh, you know, writing almost constantly while being at home. So if you need any advice on being locked down, I can give you some. Um, certainly it helps to keep your, your self occupied, I'd, I'd say. Um, like dozens of other true crime projects, the store case was meant to be a quick study. This narrative was meant to be a short book, um, what I call a kindlet, around about 20,000 words, but it ended up being about a third longer, so it's more than 30,000 words. And the murder trial hasn't even started yet. With each passing day, we're getting to know the Ravenhead stepmother at the center of this case slightly better. She's an enigma, but in a very different way to the way Chris Watts was. Whereas Watts was reserved, and we didn't really know much about who he was because he wasn't on social media. Letitia is all bluster. It's all sort of false flags and false stories. One thing they have in common is that their versions have both evolved over time. Letitia's prior to her arrest, whereas most of Watts's evolving narrative uh, happened once he was in prison. One of the trickiest aspects to interrogate in this book was the murder weapon. Was it a bat, a knife, a gun, or something else entirely? Time will tell. And that's just one of many questions that arose um, through the course of investigating this case and also within the arrest affidavit. You know, what really happened? Where did, it, where did the crime happen? Why? Um, and how was poor Gannon's body disposed of? Not once, but twice. So the Stork affidavit provides clues to the tangle, tangled web of Letitia's heart and mind, but it also reveals the exact uh, movements immediately before and after Gannon's disappearance in Boy Interrupted, I've tried to unravel who this person is by following where she went and what she said and did afterwards. Boy Interrupted is available on Amazon and I'll put the link in the description. For those who'd prefer an audio version, there's an audiobook version available on Patreon on the $5 tier. Wherever you are in the world, stay safe, stay healthy, hope you're getting enough sleep, and I'll see you guys next time.